Hello YouTube. Crafted Elements sent me this box with an 18 inch silicone mold and an acrylic 18 inch clock template. I think it's time to make a clock out of some epoxy and some pearl maple. Let's prep this clock template by removing the protective paper film with a little bit of heat. The heat helps loosen up the adhesive for less pain and less frustration in the removal process. I got this piece of burl maple from Worldwide Burl on Instagram. I'm going to take the template, line it up, and trace a line for the section I want to cut on. Now next is over to the bandsaw. At the bandsaw I'm going to cut just outside the line I drew, leaving just enough material to put the template back on to route off the excess over on the router table. After removing excess material at the bandsaw, I put some double sided tape down to hold the template in place so that I can move it over to the router table and get a nice rounded edge. This half inch compression flush trim bit from Bits and Bit is going to do a great job following that template and really smoothing out and giving me a nice rounded piece to fit into my mold. A router table with a good dust collection can make this job real easy. But this can also be accomplished with a handheld router, a flush trim bit. You just have to line it up properly and make sure that workpiece is clamped down properly. You can see I'm slowly removing a little material at a time to try to reduce the chance of kickback while I'm getting a nice smooth flush edge. For ease of removal and mold longevity, Crafted Elements recommends a non-silicone based mold release. I spray it in my garage where it's well ventilated and I don't care about the overspray. I bring the mold into a spare room in my house where the temperature can be controlled better. With the routed edge, the maple burl fits nicely up against the edge of the silicone mold for a nice tight seal. The cloth's going to take three separate epoxy pours to complete. The base layer, which I'm pouring up super clear liquid glass, a two-part epoxy with a two to one ratio, is going to go down and make a black base. I'm using black diamond pigment for the base because I think the black is going to complement the maple very well. And then I'm going to pour a clear layer over the top of that. The black base is going to be about a half an inch thick, just enough so it's not see-through, but I still want to be able to see the nice maple burl edges. Heat from the heat gun helps pop any surface bubbles and lets you see how clear the finish is. After letting the epoxy set for a couple hours it starts to thicken. This is the time to start stirring in swirls to add a little depth and character to the base layer. You want the epoxy to still be fluid enough that you can stir but it needs to be thick enough that the swirls will stay. The timing for this just comes with trial and error. After letting the black set up for about 24 hours it's not fully cured and is still a little tacky, but it is no longer fluid. This is the time where I pour the clear layer. It ensures that I get a good bond between the two layers, but also make sure that the clear epoxy and the black epoxy don't mix. You can see that there's some bubbles from this layer, but they go away easily with the torch. And just look how clear that layer is. And the depth from the maple, the contrast with the black, I let it sit for about three days before I try to take it out of the mold. Removing projects from crafted elements silicone molds are so easy. Very little cleanup to do afterwards and the mold is ready for your next project. I'm going to let the clock sit for a couple more days to fully cure before I start cutting and shaping it. Now that the epoxy is fully hardened it's time to go to the drum sander. Removing all the excess epoxy I'm flattening both sides to make it easier to attach the template for the upcoming routing. With the clock flattened, it's time to attach the template and cut out the hour markers. I use double stick tape again. I try to center it back up and get it ready for routing. To route out the hour markers, I used a palm router and a router guide bushing kit and a down cut spiral bit. It works fine for the hour markers as you can see from the video, but when I got to cut out the hour mechanism in the back, it made the square a little small and I wasn't happy with the results. 
So you'll see later in the video that I adjust the setup to clean up that square. Removing the template is easy with just a putty knife to break the seal of the tape. You can see the hour markers are cut and it's ready for the final epoxy pour. For the hour markers, I'm going to mix up some super clear tabletop epoxy. Their tabletop epoxy mixes in a 1 to 1 ratio and has a much faster curing time than liquid glass. I add some white pigment to add a contrast against the black in the pearl maple and pour it into the hour markers and let it sit for about 24 hours. With the final epoxy pour cured, back to the drum sander to flatten out the top. You can really see what the final product of this clock is going to look like. With this finished, it's time to go to the router table and start working on those edges. At the router table, I chalked up a quarter inch roundover bit. and I'm slowly raising it to get the profile I want. By raising the bit slowly and taking multiple passes and shallow cuts, I'm limiting the amount of chip out that I'm expecting to get which should make my life a lot easier when I get to the sanding portion of this project. You can see the roundover is building, but I'm still going to have some profiling to do with the sander at the end. Now we're to every woodworker's favorite part, sanding. I just joke, nobody loves sanding. But sanding is a key part to getting a smooth, shiny finish, and it's one of what's going to give us our depth between the clear and the black base, really showing off and highlighting that burl in the maple. I sand the entire piece from 80 grit to 320 grit, and then I transition to just focusing on the clear, where I go from 320 to 600 dry, and later I'm going to show you my wet sanding process. You ever heard the phrase, the right tool for the job? Well, a router bushing guide is not the right tool when you're cutting inlays with a template. It left the square for the clock movement too small, and I had to go back with this plunge bit to clean up the square and make the movement fit right. Another benefit of switching over to this bit, by removing the guide bushing, I could see my work better and my dust collection perform the way it should. This is my new preferred way to cut inlays for template routing. Now that we got the back of the clock cleaned up, it's time to go back to sanding. I'm starting out with a thousand grit wet sanding, cleaning the piece in between each grit. I'm going to work my way all the way up to 10,000 grit. You can see that I'm focusing only on the clear epoxy. I don't want to sand the wood this high because it will affect the ability of this finish to soak into the pores. The edge needs to be sanded by hand because the random orbital sander just can't follow the profile. Even with just water, you can see how that clear epoxy shines and that maple burl is going to pop. My final step is to polish the clear with this white pad and some 3M car polish. It's just going to give it a little bit extra shine and clarity once I apply the finish. I do apologize for the video quality in this next clip. We had a little technical difficulty after I applied the first coat of finish. I'm using Walrus Oil Furniture Finish and I'm just rubbing it in by hand. Trying to get a nice thick finish on there so that it will soak into the wood. I'll get ready to do a second coat here in a moment. After letting the end grain soak in that first coat for about 20 minutes, I apply a second coat of furniture finish and let it sit overnight. Come back in the morning and buff it all out. After letting the finish set up overnight, I come back with a clean towel and buff off the excess. I took the towel and attached it to the random orbital sander just to buff out the finish a little bit more. I really like how the matte finish is not too shiny, but the clarity of the epoxy really shows off that maple burl edge. I purchased this clock movement off Amazon that fits nicely in the inlay from the Crafted Elements template. Installation is easy. One brass nut, you slide on the hour hand, and then the minute hand, and they give you this nice little cap to finish it off. I want to thank Crafted Elements for giving me the opportunity to represent their company while I show off their 18-inch silicone mold and their 18-inch clock template. 
I hope you guys enjoy the video. We'll look forward to producing more for you soon.